千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. This is Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty, and he lived from 598 A.D. to 649 A.D. So he lived just a little bit over 50 years of age. Now let me tell you first about the Tang Dynasty. Tang Dynasty in Mandarin. Tang Chao is one of the periods of Chinese history in ancient times with a full flowering of Chinese civilization. Therefore, all subsequent generations of Chinese people will oftentimes refer to themselves as Tang Ren, that they are the They are the inheritor of this this mighty legacy of the Tang Dynasty. That was when China was a was a justifiably high level center of civilization in the ancient world. Taizong, this particular emperor, was known as one of the great emperors from history. Now. Let me also explain that emperors are not created equal. Some were wise, some not so wise. It depends on a lot of different factors. One factor, of course, is personal gifts, talents, intelligence, wisdom. Another factor is who were responsible for their education while growing up. As a prince in an ancient Chinese empire, someone who could one day inherit the throne as the emperor, the prince would grow up under the tutoring of great scholars who were also the ministers and advisors in the in the imperial court. So, these were personal tutors, personal teachers who taught the prince. Uh, the princes growing up, what the Tao meant, how it should be, they will become familiar with ancient literature. They will become very literate themselves, and they would oftentimes speak in the form of poetry. You know, because they were so highly refined. So in this particular case, Taizong. As he was growing up, he was definitely tutored by many wise people, wise scholars, and as he assumed the throne, he was advised by many of these people that had seen him grow up. So, as time goes on, when Taizong, the emperor, was in his prime, you can just easily guess that some of these Scholars and advisors and teachers that he had when he was little, that these men would grow old. They become wise old advisors to the emperor, and at some point, some of them will depart. Some of them will will die. Will go away. So one day, this indeed occurred for one particular. Elderly chancellor who was a valued advisor to Taizong. So he was greatly saddened by this because this advisor was known as a straight talker. He could always depend on this advisor to tell him the straight dope, as we would say it in modern times. But back in those days, you know, he could depend on this this advisor. To tell him exactly how things were, without 
without glossing over anything, without making some things look better than they actually were, without BS is what we're talking about. So value, honest, direct, frank advisor, whose departure he missed greatly. You know, he had passed away. So in reflecting on this, he conversed with one of his ministers and he said the following. So he said these lines and you can tell just by looking at it, even without knowing what the characters are, you can tell that he spoke in poetic fashion. He was very literate. He was an excellent poet himself, in addition to having many other qualities that made a great emperor. He uh, became like an example for other emperors to follow. So let me point out some characters and then I will translate it for you. First of all, you see a bunch of repeated characters here. That's the character for mirror. Okay, so the fourth character in every line is the character for mirror. The third character is translated as the English word as, A-S. The first character is translated as use, U-S-E. So use something as mirror. Use something as mirror. Use something as mirror. So that's the beginning of that. The second part, the first two characters means can or able to. And then we have a bunch of characters here that are not repeating. So I will just translate them for you. So you can begin to get a sense for these poetic lines where Taizong, this ancient emperor, was basically saying, when I use something as mirror, I can do X, Y, Z. When I use something else as mirror, I can do A, B, C, and so on. Here's the translation. Let me read it for you. He said to the minister, using polished brass as mirror, I can adjust my attire. Using the ancients as mirror, I can know the rise and fall of history. Using others as mirror, I can understand gain and loss. So that's how the lines translate. And let me explain. In the translation here, some words are added to it that did not exist. So for instance, he only said using brass as mirror. Polished brass is for clarification. So back in those ancient times, they did not have the technology for mirrors as we know them today. So they had to use polished brass, which when truly polished was actually a decent mirror. So he would use that mirror on a daily basis to check his appearance. He would stand in front of it and make sure that there is nothing loose exactly the same way that we would with the mirror ourselves. Those who know Chinese history when looking at this picture will automatically very quickly know that this is a depiction of an emperor. How will we know that? Well, there are quite a few hints. He has this robe that's yellow. So traditionally, Huang Pao, the yellow robe, is signifying the position of the ruler, the emperor. Then, embroidered on the yellow robe is the dragon. That is also signifying the emperor. The emperor is the dragon. So he checks his appearance using brass as a mirror, using the mirrors that's all around the palace so he can adjust his hat his robe make sure nothing is amiss then he goes off of there and then uses the metaphor of using the ancients as a mirror that means using history 
that teaches him the rise and fall of ancient empires so he can learn from that, learn from history to not repeat the mistakes of the ancients. Then he learns from Ren, other people as mirror. So to understand gain and loss, what he means there specifically is in, in regards to spirituality and insights. Loss of insights, gain of a spiritual nature, you know, not gain and loss in terms of material things. So what he's saying is that, what he said to the minister was that, you see, I have three mirrors that I treasure, that I cherish. I have the mirror that I use to adjust my appearance. I have ancient history as a mirror to understand the rise and fall of ancient empires. Then I have other people as a mirror so that I can understand what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. So today I have lost a valued and treasured mirror, referring to the elderly chancellor, advisor who has passed away and expressing great sadness. So now you can see why this emperor became known as the, one of the greatest emperors in Chinese history. It's because he follows the Tao. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.